the hell, Monty? Oops. Uh, I think there's a light on the dash. I think it's a brake light. Can you have a look at it? Have a nice day. Monty! Your jokes are bloody killing me! Before I even get started with this job, I'm going to remove the cap off the brake fluid reservoir. The reason being is because I'm going to be changing the brake pads, when I push the pistons back on the calipers, it's going to make the brake fluid level rise. And if the cap was on, it could spray out all over the place and cause a right mess. And we don't want that, especially if this was a customer's vehicle, <laughs> you'd be in trouble. So uh, if there were too much fluid in here, you'd have to drain a little bit out. But looking in here, there's, it's fairly low, so I'm pretty sure we're going to be okay. I do like the rear axle on these trams. It's not because it's like horse and cart suspension and it's any bloody good. It's the fact that you can actually jack up on it. Hello everybody. It's a flipping cold January morning. I'll tell you something. I come in here first thing. It's like a flipping ice box in this garage. We've got a heater, which is a really good heater, but it's been out of action all flipping Christmas since about a week before Christmas. It's only just been fixed. I've just switched it on. In fact, I'll show you the goddamn heater in a minute. But first of all, I'm going to the job for today. I thought I'd do this. Uh, it's rear brake pads on a 2019 Ford Transit Tornio. Uh, I reckon it's its first brake pad change. I don't think they've been done before. It's about 38,000 miles on the clock, so they ain't done bad. And all the pads all round are, are actually sort of like worn really low. But I was going to show the rear ones because they're not, although they're pretty standard like, like most cars, they've got wind back calipers. These ones are a little bit more tricky. I'm going to show you why in a minute. So I'll get on with this and then I'll have another moan about the heater. But anyway, as it warms up in here, I'll start taking my hat and coat off. So anyway, I'm going to get this wheel off and get on with this first. I thought I'd show you this anyway because I've got nothing else to show you. Everything else I've been doing is like, I've already made a video on it, so <laughs> there's nothing new. This is about as exciting as it gets. Anyway, right, let's get the wheel off. I've got the vehicle already jacked up, but before I take the wheel off, when the vehicle was still on the ground, I undone the locking wheel nut by hand, but with a bar, if you know what I mean. Because you don't want to use an air gun undoing these locking wheel nuts, because you could actually, if, if they're tight, and some people do these locking wheel nuts up, too bloody tight and if you use an air gun on this you can break this and then you're going to be in trouble so uh, always use a bar and try and undo them carefully that's the first thing then jack your vehicle up I'm having to use my phone under here because it's it's so tight to flip and get to but you've got two 13 mils that you've got to undo uh, generally they're not too tight but you see there's there's another little like a slider pin here with a flat on it. If I try and undo these and keep turning, the, the slider pin will keep spinning. So you've got to hold it. You can get a spanner on it, but what I you know, generally tend to do is get a pair of mold grips on the, the flats of that slider and hold it like that. So uh, I'm trying to do this one handy, but you see what I mean. You put one hand on the mold grips, one hand and undo your, your bolts and they'll come out all right then. <laughs> now, now I've had to put the flipping uh, phone down to undo the bolt. Now it's loose. That will come out nicely. There. So we get the we'll get the top one out as well. Same way. Right. That's both our bolts out now. There's one other thing. There's a brake pad warning sensor on these pads on the passenger rear. So uh, you've got to disconnect the plug connector, which is here. There's two. There's two wiring plugs here, one's ABS and one's for your brake pad warning sensor. So you've got to like, there's a little clip in here, you tab, you push down, and then you pull this. I've already undone it some, because uh, it was a bit tight coming out, so you've just got to be careful, okay? But uh, yeah, that should pop out of there. And we'll leave that hanging for the minute, and I'll get back to that in a minute. The sensing wire 
the wire we've just disconnected, which is here, it sort of like roots through the little rubber cap that goes over your bleed nipple on your brake caliper. So I've just pulled that cap off. And now we can remove that piece of wiring from there. And we can pull that whole wiring right out. Now all we really need to do is using a pry bar, we can like pry the caliper out. It might be tight, it might be loose, it all depends. That's it. Yeah, come on. We're off. Just remember that the, the inner pad with the sensing wire on it comes down and it comes through the caliper. So when you put the new pad in, you've got to remember to feed the wire back through the caliper. So anyway, I'll push that out. And that inner pad can actually come off. So I'll just remove that outer pad as well. That's come out quite easily. These metal clips that the pads sit in, you can actually take them off, okay, and you can replace these. Most kits, brake pads, I'll show you in a minute, they come with, with these in it as well. So you best just change them. You, I mean, you are paying for them. But when they're off, you want to get a little screwdriver in there or a little file or something, maybe a little wire brush. Just give it a clean up because they do get sort of like, they can get corona, under, corroded under here. Probably not so much on this one because this transit's quite new. But if you get one that's a few years older, they can sort of like get a bit crudded under here and then stop the pad from fitting in very easily. So give them surfaces a good little clean up. And then you can pop your new. Yeah, we go. And that's like a spring clip. The pad is sitting there. And that, that spring sort of like holds the pad in tension so it can't chatter around. Yeah. I would definitely say them pads have just about had it. We caught them just in time. And say so the, the wear sensor is uh, getting pretty close. So it wouldn't have been long before that started scraping on that and, and putting the light on. Other thing to look out for, the two slider pins where we took the bolts out of, they should slide in and out nice and freely. If, if they were stuck and you can't move them, then you've got a problem. You need to sort of like get some mole grips and get these out, clean them all up and then put new grease on them. They shouldn't be seized up at all. Well, especially not on a bloody 19 plate, but they do get, I believe that they do get seized up on older cars. So uh, just make sure they're okay, nice and slidey. This is gonna be a bit tricky to show because I haven't actually got much movement with this caliper to get it out in the open. But what I gen ten <laughs> generally tend to do is, the actual boot that goes around the piston, I will pull that back with a screwdriver and get the screwdriver in there and pull the boot out a little bit and I use some silicon spray to go around the boot. The reason for that is, if you don't do that, there's a possibility the boot could be stuck to the piston. So when you start winding the piston in, the boot could twist and if it gets twisted, it can split. And then just basically the end of the caliper, you have to replace it because it will get water and dampness to get in there very quickly and rust it up. So as long as that boot is actually nice and free and spins, where the piston spins and, don't, and is not stuck to the boot, then we're all good. Generally, I can use a bloody vice grip like this to push the piston in and twist it in with a pair of mole grips. Some pistons go back nice and easy, they turn what nice and easily. I can even use like a pair of long nose pliers to actually turn some of these pistons back in. But these transit ones, they are a bit of a sod. They are quite tight and hard to do. So I wouldn't even attempt to use a pair of mole grips. I'm gonna use the proper tool for this. I mean, really at the end of the day, one of these wind back tools, they're actually quite cheap. I think this is only like 30, 40 quid for the whole kit. It's been pretty good. I mean, <laughs> believe me, whoever's used one of these, you'll never go back because once you've, you've used this, <laughs> it's like, these are great. These just do the job. Anyway, I, I know exactly what attachment it is. So that one there will go on there like that. Them two dots will go into like, the slots in our piston and then you'll pop this tool up. But there again, you, you do need an air compressor to work this. So, uh, 
be warned <laughs> if you haven't got an air compressor. Unless there's another method of, of winding the piston back, I don't know. But anyway, let's pop this on. So just to recap, our little adapter here, you've got two little slots in that piston. The two little pins in our adapter will slot into the slots in our piston. And then our tool will sort of like dot into them two dots and then we can get it turning. So I've kind of, so I've kind of got the tool in position. If I pull the trigger, let the air through. Uh, come on, there we go. That's now, that's now held. The idea now is to keep that trigger pulled in to keep the air pressure on and then turn this handle, which will wind our piston back in. So I'm going to give it a go. It's spinning. Yeah! Well, I say these, these transits, they're a right pain because they're really tight to spin back in. Whereas other, some calipers, the pistons wind back in so easily, but these ones don't. They're really flipping awkward. And you're, you're working in an awkward, an awkward position. You haven't got much room to even fit the tool in here. But I will note here one other thing, if I can get it moving. This passenger side brake, you wind the piston in clockwise. And that, that is a, a thing to remember because on this particular transit, the driver's side, you would think you would wind it in clockwise as well, but you don't. On the driver's side, you have to wind them in anti-clockwise. So they're, they're opposites, if you know what I mean. So just remember that. Wind the piston in clockwise on the passenger side, wind the piston in anti-clockwise on the driver's side. I wish I could show this in a bit more, <laughs> a bit more detail, but I'm in such limited room here. But I'm winding this in, and even with the tool, it's pretty tight. They don't make these transits easy. There. The, the, the last thing, when the pist when, once the piston is right in, the two slots, you have to get them like level. So I'll, sh I'll show you that in a minute. That's wound right in. There's a little release valve on the back of this tool. So if I release it, I can take the tool out of the way. You see where I've stopped winding? So the two slots, one is like directly in the middle of the hole in, the, in this caliper. The reason for that is on the new pad, there's like a little dot on the pad that's going to locate in that, in that slot. So uh, that's the reason why we've got to have them in that position. I'm just pointing out here, I'm using genuine Motocraft brake pads here. I know they're expensive, but they're good. So uh, that, that is the part number if you ever need it. So open sesame. There we go. You'll notice there's two different types of pad. There's one with a slot in it, well two of a slot in it. They're your inner pads. They've got that little slot in the top. And the outer pads, they don't have a slot in the top. But the, so the reason, the reason these inner ones have a slot in the top is because these are the ones where the brake pad sensing wire goes. So I'm going to pop these on. This kit I've got actually comes with two sensing wires, but I only need one because they've only got the one sensing wire on the passenger rear. They don't have one on the driver's rear. Anyway, you get your sensing wire. I, you, don't, you can't really get it the wrong way round, but you've got like a little domed bit on it. That's the bit that's going to wear onto the pad, if, should the pads wear down enough. And you just push that into the pad like that, and it just clips in. So, simple. Before I pop these pads in, a lot of people like to put a bit of gold grease just on the, just on the little edge where, the, where they actually fit into the, these little caliper tabs just in case they stop them seizing up. So uh, I always put a little bit of grease on them, just a tiny bit. Anyway, that will now slot in there like that. You call, like, if you put them in at an angle, like so, then they'll slot in and nice and easy. And the inner pad, remember to put the wire through the caliper hole. <laughs> Don't want to forget that one. Then we can slot that in place. There, bingo. Okay, now it's just a case of 
popping the caliper back on. There. And as I'm using the proper Ford kit, they come with new bolts, 13 mils, with a bit of Loctite on the threads. So I'll get my two bolts back in. If them bolts do not line up, like I mean this, this bit here, if it doesn't quite line up with the sliders, then you haven't got the piston quite in the right place. So you'd have to move it left or right just a tiny bit. Because like I say, the, the, little, the little notch on the back of the brake pad has to slot into the little slot in the piston. And if it's not in the right position, it's not the caliper's not going to fit properly. Anyway, I'll get them in. Get my mold grips on that. And I'll tighten these two bolts up. There. Also, the brake pad sensing wire, I fed that back through. I can't show it really, but I've, I've I fed it back through next to the bleed nipple and put the cap on so that wire's secure there and I've rooted it back the way it originally was. I'm just going to connect it up underneath the, on the back axle now. So we'll get our wire and we'll just plug that back in, make sure it's fully home. That's it and also there's a little clip here that the wire's supposed to go into. So you just push the wire into there that will hold it secure. I didn't show this uh, when I was taking it off, but normally you have to get a screwdriver and prise this clip open so you can pull the, the old wire out. But then again, the old wire you're not going to use anyway, so it doesn't matter if you break it. So that's it. Job done. Before I put the wheel back on, I'm just going to point something out here. This transit is only done like 38,000 miles. The brake discs are really good, so they obviously don't need changing. But uh, my mate down the road, he had to change some rear discs on one of these transits and it was a 17 plate, which is the same setup as this. Once you've, he had the whole hub off, he could not separate the disc from the hub with the wheel bearing on it. It was so rotted on that no matter what he'd done, would not get it off. Even trying to press, trying to hammer, nothing would get it off. So we ended up having to smash the disc to pieces to get it off and in the end it just ended up with a complete brand new uh, wheel bearing and disc as well. So I'm just saying, if I ever have to change these discs and I get the same problem, then I'll probably make a point of it and I'll show it. So, that you, so you, it may be a case of, if you're going to change the discs, you may find out that you may have to change the bearings as well, because it could be too much of a problem trying to get them all separated because they're a bit of an odd setup where the bloody disc is in board of the wheel bearing hub. So, but anyway, that's for another day. I'm going to put the wheel back on now. Then there's one more thing we need to do before we touch the handbrake. Ah! Get on there! Ooh. Yeah, so whenever you've changed rear brake pads, especially the wind back calipers, do not touch the handbrake. Once they're all fitted, press the brake pedal like half a dozen times. That way you're pushing the piston up against the pads and making everything as it should be, so, so to speak. Because if you pull the handbrake up straight away, you're gonna, you're gonna mess the handbrake mechanism up inside the caliper, and you could end up with a situation where your handbrake's not working very well. So always do that. Give the brake pedal a good, like, half a dozen good pumps. Then you can pull the handbrake up. Now, that we've actually pumped the brake and checked the handbrake, I'll just check there's nothing binding on the wheels. Perfect! Just in case anybody wanted to know what the torque settings were for this vehicle, uh, Tornio Custom, uh, 19 plate obviously, 2 litre Eco Blue. Uh, I've looked through the specifications and the road wheels it does, first of all, it does say, do not lubricate studs, nuts, or mating surfaces. And they are 200 Newton meters. And I have to say, that's pretty damn tight. Yeah! Oh. Right then, that's a job well done. Oh.
I'll tell you something, if you're doing this, wear gloves. It's not very nice having brake dust all over your hands. And it's starting to warm up in here. Ooh. I'll tell you, by this afternoon, it'd be like the tropics. In actual fact, come and have a look at this heater. Yeah, this heater, it packed up just before Christmas. Flipping it. Can you see it? Where do you think, where do you think the heater is? <laughs> there she is, the RMS Titanic. The only difference with this one is airborne. Anyway, I'm going to tell you what happened. By the way, this is a, it's a diesel uh, powered heater. It's diesel oil that fuels it. Uh, just before Christmas, it just stopped working. And we couldn't work out why. So we have to try and believe it. But above the, above the actual heating unit, there's a little tank. You probably can't see it, I'm not sure. But there's a little tank up there. It's like a reservoir tank. which holds diesel. It holds a certain amount of diesel. So it never runs dry, you know what I mean? There's always like a tank of diesel feeding the heater. Which, for obvious reasons, because it's up in the air. Inside that tank, there's like a little motor. The motor draws the fuel through from a tank which is like down on the ground, on the other side of that wall. So the pipe goes all the way up to the roof and across to that little tank up there, and it feeds the heater. The problem is the pump in that tank packed up. So we were able to sort of like bleed the heater, but what would happen is if you switch the heater off, overnight diesel fuel would then run back into the main tank outside. So we finally got the, and then the ignite packed up on it anyway, so it wouldn't go. So we got the guy out, and what he's done is, he's done away with that little tank up there, because it's, it's actually, they can't get a replacement for it. So he's, he's fixed up like a, I forget what he called it, there's like a little silver canister up there. It's like a little reservoir. So that reservoir up there is now like the feed for the heater. So it's got like a little tank of diesel feeding it. And it's been really lovely. So we got that fixed yesterday. That's about 21st of uh, January to fix that. That's great. The trouble is these heaters are great when they're working. But my God, they do, they do tend to go wrong a lot. It's got, it's got like all the ducting coming out of here. One goes through to the offices. These pipes here, got one coming out into this part of the garage and that branches off into the part I've been through in the wall. Anyway, oh, enough about heaters. I, ju I just hope it keeps on working now. <laughs> Anyway, I guess this seems an appropriate point to end the video. I hope you've learned something. Rear brake pads on a transit. These are actually quite nice. I'm, I'm quite impressed with them. I, I, I'm, I'm, my jury's out on this. I've heard a lot of horror stories of the engines and the wet belts. And I'll tell you for now, the wet belts that go in these engines, mm -mm. I am not a fan because I've, I've, I haven't done one myself yet. If I had one of these engines out of the vehicle, I would do it and I would show it. But I can't really do it in the vehicle, it's too much of a bloody pain. If it was rear wheel drive, it'd be easier, but because it's front wheel drive, it's on the side of the engine, I can't get down there to show. But I know someone who's done one of these cam belts, wet belts, and it's a flipping job and a half. You've got to take the sump off, because there's two belts. There's the main wet belt, the main cam belt one, and there's also the, there's a little oil pump belt as well which means you've got to take the sump off. It's a right flipping palaver. But if I ever get to that, I will show it. But yeah, these, these transits are nice. I do like them, but they're sort of like, they're a bit technical. There's, there's, too, there's too much bloody uh, exhaust gas recirculation bullshit on it now. Too many, too many electrical problems. It, I'll tell you something, if I went into one of these and you started looking under the dash, there's about three or four fuse boxes all underneath the dash in different places. It's, it's like, you get problems with it. Hopefully to God they won't go wrong too much, but if they do go wrong, flipping heck, you, you'll certainly need the technical information to start working on them. Also, I'm, I'm at the moment I'm sticking to the basic things like brakes, you can't go too far wrong. Anyway, that's it, I've done the rear brake pads. So uh, if I find anything else in one of these, I will certainly show it, anything that's, that's kind of interesting. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, see you guys in the next one.
Adios. Oh, just one last thing before I go. This is quite a common thing with these wheel nuts. They've got like a chrome tin cap over the main uh, steel part of the wheel nut. And what happens is they get ballooned. <laughs> I don't know, but anyway, they get swollen. So basically you get your socket and your socket won't go on. It just will not fit. And I'm telling you now, the wheel brace that comes with the van, don't even bother using it. You need a proper socket. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put that socket here and I'm gonna whack it on. Because otherwise, if you, if you try and twist this, get it on a little bit and try and twist it, you're just gonna, you're just gonna mess this cap up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit of freeing oil on top of that cap, put my socket on it with an extension, and I'm gonna whack it on with a hammer. Now that socket is really tight on that wheel nut, the best thing to do here is just bang it, the hammer, top and bottom and side to side. That will kind of free it off. So now I can jiggle the socket back off. That way, it's, it, now it's going on nice and easily. So what we can do is now we can undo it. But yeah, what I would suggest get yourself a brand new set of wheel nuts if that happens because these little tin caps are not very good once they balloon although you've I've just squashed it back down again they'll balloon again I'm not sh exactly sure what the reason is whether dampness is getting in there or whether it's dodgy sockets undoing them or what I, I'm getting the feeling it's dampness and water that's getting in there because these these buses and a lot of our taxis they're around pressure washers a lot getting cleaned and I'm sure the dampness gets under the cap and makes them balloon but anyway I could be wrong but yeah, if it does happen to you, change your wheel nuts. We have had many a driver stuck by the side of the road because them caps have been ballooned and they can't get the wheel brace on. They end up rounding off the cap and then they're stuck and we have to come out and rescue them. Anyway, that's a little tip for getting them off, okay? So, uh, but like I say, when you, when you push the bar about once you've got the socket on the wheel nut, it, it loosens it up and pushes all this back into place so that when you get the wheel nut off, you can actually get your socket back off the wheel nut. Anyway, that's it for today. See you in the next one, guys. Adios.